What is up, YouTube? Roger here, and welcome to another episode of Roger Talks. Um, this time, I am going to be talking about a few ninja improvements that I think should be added to the game. If anyone doesn't know what the ninja team is, there are a bunch of um, people at Jagex that basically add quick fixes to the game that have a large popularity type of thing, like you know, quick things to change that help or like that a lot of people like. So. Basically, the past few weeks, I don't know, you probably noticed on a couple of videos of mine, maybe, maybe not, that I had a notepad open on my game with game suggestions in them. And I also had it open when I was live streaming the um, the new quest, Fate of the Gods. Some of you may have noticed that, some of you may have not. But anyway, I've been writing ideas on my notepad in game for the past few weeks and things that I think that could be changed that would make a large benefit to the game or, you know, just things that... I would love personally and I think a lot of other people would. I made a thread on high level forums last night with the same ideas in it. People seem to like it and it seems to be quite popular. So I've tried to get the attention of the ninja team on Twitter and that kind of stuff. So hopefully we'll see what, what happens, what goes from there. Okay, so the first idea that I've been nagging Jagex for since I was there the first time, um, I actually stood behind one of the interface guys when they were they were creating the NIS and I was like, we need a way to be able to drag the quests out of the the, uh, the interface because pr previously there was a horrible type of challenges interface that they had where you could, you know, the quest was tabbed in there and it didn't have its own tab in game anymore after the end of the combat academy. So I was thinking, you know, why can't we just pull individual quest journals out of the interface and have them auto update as we complete the quest? Because I'm a big quester and I love lore and that kind of stuff, I always have a quest journal open whenever I'm doing, doing a quest because it makes it easy to follow along and it's nice to see what things have changed that you might not necessarily see or notice and it's put on your quest journal. So it's it's quite nice to follow along. So I'd love to have a little interface. Like If anyone's ever done an Elite Clue, you'll notice that a little interface pops up with the arrow that spins around that you can follow. And that that's great. That's amazing because you don't have to keep clicking on your clue scroll to find out where the arrow is, how it's changed. You can just watch the arrow move as you run around the game. And I think that's brilliant. I love that kind of thing. So I figured, you know, if we can do that, why can't we do this with quests? Why can't the quest journals auto update? Why can't we have that on our screen as a separate interface whilst we're doing quests? It'd be great, right? So I pulled up, a, 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 created a little bit of a concept for it in Photoshop. You'll see that image on screen. Um, you know, I really like the idea of being able to just proactively update the quest guide. Even if they couldn't do that, it'd be nice to have the same thing, but with a refresh button on it that you can click every so often so you don't have to keep going into your quest interface, uh, your adventurer's interface, sorry, and then click quests, then scroll down to the quest that you're doing, then click the quest, then scroll down the quest journal. It's like five different things that would make it a lot more convenient. And wasn't the NIS supposed to make things more convenient? It was, right? So... I would love that kind of thing, and I'm sure a lot of other people that do quests do, and it would be awesome. So that's my first thing. The second thing is another interface thing that relates to combat mainly. I don't know if you've noticed, you will have done, but you know. Uh, so when you open a combat interface that has multiple different styles, like um, the hit points one or the, the magic one, you'll notice that it has different tabs for different things, like the magic one has like alchemy, um, you know, enchants, that kind of stuff. Then it has like combat spells, then it has abilities and that kind of stuff. So so it has a few different tabs. And the same with attack and strength. So like, you know, you put, open the melee one, it has attack and strength. Why can't we drag those out individually as their own little things? Why do we have to have attack and strength open when it's taking more interface space than it needs to? And we're not going to use the other one anyway. Like, it, it, it doesn't make much sense. We should be able to tab it if we want to, but we can do that anyway. Why can't we just pull them out as individual interfaces? It doesn't make any sense. Like, that's something that I think would be great. Um, thirdly, I've noticed that a lot of people are getting dead clicks recently. So, like, you know, when you click on things or drag things around, uh, you get dead clicks. So it basically doesn't register the, the click that you've done. So... You know, you'll click on a, a potion to drink it and it doesn't drink it first time, or you'll click on ability and it doesn't cast it. However, I have seen a post by ModPy on Twitter today with a vine in it. I will put that in the description of the video, so if any of you want to see it, he's fixed uh, it with switching on RS3, so you can switch in less than a second, and it works. 
it's great. I think it works on the beta as well, so I'll also put the link to the beta in the description if you want to check that out, so you can try it out and all that kind of stuff. I'm not sure if it's the same exact thing or if it's just switching and that kind of stuff, but hopefully it works the same way because in old school the clicking is a lot more responsive and it's a lot easier to use and that kind of stuff whereas in RS3 it's not so much and I think it's because the interface has gone through a massive overhaul and we haven't necessarily you know it's not as uh, lightweight kind of thing so I think that might be why and I think it's more of an engine issue that they have to deal with so it's not necessarily an easy thing but it, it you know it's just one of these things that's a little pet peeve um, the next thing I guess is more beneficial to me and other RuneFest attendees. So basically, it, RuneFest 2010, we were given a, a Flagstaff of Festivities, which basically is a Flagstaff, like a Vexilum type thing, but with a banner on it that has the RuneFest icon. So that uh, we can hold in our hands, and we used to be able to, with like a Vexilum, you'd hold it up, and it would stand, you know, like it, it makes sense to, because otherwise it would hurt if you were holding it like, out like a sword. But you would hold it up, balance the bottom of the um, the staff on the floor like you would like a, a regular staff, and the the flag staff would be held up, you know, like to to show the banner. Okay, but it recently with the combat stance things, it was changed so that you hold it outwards like a sword, and I never understood that. Why would they change that? Because it kind of ruins the point of the item, and it looks it looks nice when you hold it up. You know, like it, it just ruins the, the stance of the whole item and it's a little bit disappointing that that would change and I think it would be nice if Vexlums were the same way and a couple of other things, you know, post suggestions if you have any, um, but that's the, the only thing I can really think of, but I would love to have that change back. It's such an easy thing on their end to fix probably and it's it would, you know, although there's not many flag staffs in the game, it's probably one of the rarest items in the game actually, you never see them, but you know, it's it's such an, a great thing for me and other RuneFest attendees. And also when you put the, when you sheathe the flag staff, it goes on your back, but the flag, the staff, uh, sorry, the, the sh banner part on the back with the symbol on it rolls up and you can't see what it is. You can just see a stick. So you just have a stick on your back. It's like, what? What's the point in that? You can't even see what they've got on their back. It just looks like a stick. So that would be nice if they allowed the banner to roll back out again. It's a nice idea, don't get me wrong, the concept is cool and all that kind of stuff, and I, it makes a little bit of sense, but personally I don't like it, it's not my thing, and it's something I would like changed. And the final thing is the uh, Tesseract Jad Pet. For any of you who've done so Wars, or, you know, had the Jad Pet in the past, I don't know how long ago you've all done it, but basically when the Jad Pet came out before they reworked the Fight Caves, it looked so adorable. It was... But hands down, I think it was the best pet in the game, and that's for me. That's hard to say because there's a lot of pets that I like. I like the Vitalis, I like the Jad pet, I like the the Freezy pet. You know, there's a few of them that I like, but the Jad pet I think topped the list for me at the point uh, it was. And you'll see a picture of that on screen. It was the cutest, little, most adorable little thing, and it was it it looked nice. You know, it had this adorable little tail, and it it had textures on it. And then they reworked the fight caves and they were like, oh shit, we need to rework the Jad pet as well to match the new Jad. So when the new Jad rolled in, the, the new Jad, the big version, looks nice, but the pet looks awful. And it looks like it's got a purple coat on it and all of the textures have been taken away. It looks like it's just, you know, somebody's taken a chisel to him or something and chiseled all his little parts off. And that sounded bad, so I'm sorry, but you you get what I mean. You'll see in the picture anyway what I mean. So... You know, I would love to have an option, say, um, to be able to feed a kiln kip to it or something, to make it um, to go back to the old version, or you know, something like that that would encourage people, or even like a million tockle or something to make it go back to the old version. Something that requires game interaction that isn't a Solomon store thing, or you know, I don't like the idea of the Solomon store with pets and the armor overrides because I think that armor over over overrides like Torva and Pernix and that kind of stuff should require you to have the armor to get the overrides. It would give the armor more value, people would buy the armor, it would take some of the armor out of the game and I think it would genuinely be a good thing. It would give Nex armors more value. Nex armors don't have much value at the moment, neither do many of the God Wars armors, but people like the old look. They should have What they should have done is said, okay, you must have the armor to have the cosmetic override. 
And I think that would have been more than fair, you know? So it would encourage people to buy these armors that they necessarily might not have spent money on in the past to get these armors back, to put them in keepsake boxes or whatever, and get choose to have the old override. I think that would have made a lot more sense, but I think it's a little bit too late to go back on it now, you know? I think that decision is already made and the boat is already gone. You know, the ship's already sailed because you can't necessarily just t remove everybody's overrides that they've spent hundreds of thousands of rune coins on and then refund everybody because it you know it, it's a little bit of a problem so it's i think the the ship's already sailed on that part and it's a little bit disappointing because it would have made a lot of sense and given armors more value in general and i think it should have been thought about initially but apparently not um it would be nice if they could still change it somehow whilst reimbursing people that you know whatever but um yeah that's pretty much it um if you like any of these ideas or have any feedback or want to discuss them, please feel free to post in the comments. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Well, thanks for listening, rather. And I uh, hope you enjoyed. Cheers, guys.